Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! One of the things that is really confusing in music theory is when we use the same word to indicate different ideas. Now, the word dominant in music has exactly this problem. There are indeed several concepts connected to the word dominant, and then you are left to understand which one we are talking about by the context in which we say it, but in some cases, this is actually not really possible. So how did we get to that, and what dominant really means in music theory? Well, the real origin of the word dominant is lost in time. Some sources say that the original meaning was the most common note in the melody. Nobody uses dominant with this meaning anymore, so we can safely ignore this. But let's say that eventually, around the Baroque era, the name dominant came to indicate the fifth note of the scale. With the invention of chords, or discovery of chords, depending on your philosophical outlook, by Jean-Philippe Rameau, the term dominant came to signify not just the fifth note of the key, but also, and especially, the chord built on that note, the fifth chord of the key. Now, in the C major key, this chord can be made by the notes G, B, and D, or G, B, D, and F. In the C minor key, the chord happens to have the exact same note, G, B, and D, or G, B, D, and F. You have to remember, of course, that in the Baroque era, the chords are taken not from the C natural minor scale, but from the C harmonic minor scale, and the C harmonic minor as a natural B, not a B flat. So far, so good. But in the 20th century, with the arrival of jazz, the term dominant started shifting to a slightly different meaning. And indeed, jazz player called dominant seven all those seventh chords with a major third and a minor seventh, regardless of their position in the scale. Now, this does not seem to be a big problem at first. After all, if we take the C major scale and the C harmonic minor scale, chords with the major third and the flat seven appear only in the fifth position. So, no problem. But if you start, for instance, to use natural minor to get your chord, then the seventh chord in this key so the seventh chord in the key of C minor is B flat seventh, a dominant chord in the jazz sense, if you want. So we can see that the two definitions of dominant chord are not exactly the same. So the thing here is that in classical music, dominant refers to a position in the scale, while in jazz, dominant refers to a specific intervallic makeup of a chord. How did the theoretician in classical music refer to the intervallic makeup? Well, they simply didn't. You were supposed to know if the second triad in the key was major or minor or diminished, or if the sixth chord in the key had a major seventh or a minor seventh. In other words, in classical theory, you are expected to be diatonic to a key, that is, use only notes in a specific key, and if you get out of that key, then you start indicating the alteration. In jazz, instead, since modulations are much more frequent, and chords out of key are much more frequent too, it became more convenient to indicate if a chord was a dominant seventh, or a minor seventh, or a major seventh, or a minor major seventh, and all these kind of things, independently of a key. So again, the two definitions of dominant chord in classical and in jazz are not exactly the same. And by the way, here I am simplifying, because both classical and jazz musicians do understand that dominant may refer to either the position of a chord in the key or to its intervallic makeup. In general, we get by by knowing in what context the term dominant was used. And this will be fine, except that dominant happens to have at least another meaning. You keep using the word. I don't know think it means what you think it means. Let's do a step back. And let's talk about Hugo Riemann's theory of functional harmony. According to this theory, chords can have one of three functions tonic function, subdominant function, and dominant function. It's just a way to classify chords so we know what they are doing in tonal music. Now, Hugo Riemann was such an influential music theorist that his followers splintered 
in several different schools of thoughts, each one with the same basic idea, but with slightly different details from each other. So exact definition on what the tonic function is, the subdominant function is, and the dominant function is, are really hard to give because the details are controversial. But by and large, let's say that most people agree that dominant function chords are the chords that point strongly back to the first chord in the key. That is, if you want to go back to the first chord in the key, you put a dominant function chord just before it, so that you have a lot of tension, and this tension resolves when we go back to the first chord. Not only the definitions are controversial, but there is no universal agreement either on what chords have tonic function, what chords have subdominant function, and what chords have dominant function. Again, by and large, there is an agreement that, for instance, the first chord has tonic function, the fourth and second chord has subdominant function, and the fifth and the seventh chord have dominant function. But for instance, the third and the sixth chord of a key tend to be assigned to different groups, depending on who you ask. So let's stay on solid ground. Dominant function chord are the fifth chord of the key and the seventh chord of the key. In C major, the seventh chord of the key, or if you want, the chord built on the seventh degree of the scale, it's a B half diminish. The notes are B, D, F, and A. In C minor, the chord built on the seventh degree on the scale, it's a B diminish seventh chord. Notes B, D, F, A flat. Now, here we have something really curious because this chord has dominant function, but this chord doesn't have both a major third and a flat seventh, so it's not a dominant chord in the jazz sense, and it's not the fifth chord of the key, so it's not a dominant chord in the classical sense. So these chords have dominant function, but they are not dominant chord. If at this point you want to start screaming in frustration, I will understand. Now, at this point, I have to mention that the paradox is not as bad as it seems, because indeed those chords can be seen as dominant ninth chord without a root. What do I mean with that? Well, in C major, the dominant ninth chord, G9, has the notes G, B, D, F, and A. If I eliminate the root, the G, I have the seventh chord, which is the B half diminish. In C minor, the dominant ninth chord is G7 with a flat 9, with notes G, B, D, F, and A flat. If I eliminate the root G, then I have the B diminish 7th chord. So in this view, the chords built on the 7th degree of the scale are not really independent chord, but they are, if you want, derived from the 5th chord of the key, from the dominant in the classical sense, chord of the key. In support to that, you may notice that in the chord symbol for diminished seventh and half diminished chords, there is this little circle here. Well, this is not actually a circle, this is a zero. In some notations used in classical music, derived from the continuum notation, which involves using numbers close to the chord symbol, this zero means no root, that is, the root is not played. So in the very symbol of diminish and half diminish chord, there is this idea that we start from a dominant in the classical sense chord and we eliminate its root. But still, those chords can have dominant function, but not be strictly dominant in either sense of the word. This gets worse when we get even just slightly outside of tonal music. Let's take a major blues in A. Some people would call it a dominant blues in A, of course, because we need more meaning for dominant. But anyway, the first chord of this progression will be an A seventh chord. This chord is dominant in the jazz sense, meaning it has a major third and a flat seven. But it's definitely not dominant in the classical sense because it's the first chord of the key, not the fifth. And here's the thing. Since this chord does not resolve to another chord, it's not a tension chord resolving to another chord in the same way that in classical music you have a fifth chord to a first chord, this chord doesn't seem to have 
dominant function. Some people say that this chord here is a tonic chord, even if it's altered with this seventh. Some other people will say that this is a non-functional dominant chord, meaning that it doesn't have any of the three classical functions of the chord, tonic, subdominant, or dominant. Either way, this chord does not have dominant function. So now we have the opposite case as before. This is a dominant chord, at least in the jazz sense, that does not have dominant function. While before we've seen the chord built on the seventh degree of a scale, which were not dominant chord, but had dominant function. So, as you can see, this is quite a mess. And notice that we limited ourselves to talk only about chords, because dominant can have other meanings, like the dominant key, or the dominant side or direction of modulation, which is another whole can of worms. So, harmony can be messy, and especially the names we give to all these can be confusing and have multiple meanings. Now, if you want the practical bits of harmony applied straight to your guitar, then I recommend that you have a look at my course, Complete Chord Mastery. There, we do all our theory straight on the fretboard. Everything is immediately practical and applicable to your guitar. And I try, and I hope I succeed, to minimize any kind of confusion due to this kind of imprecise terminology that music theory often has. If you are interested in becoming a harmonic powerhouse and you have just a minute, check out Complete Chord Mastery at the link on the top right. If you like this video, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any comment, feedback, suggestion, well, write them down in the comment. I love reading from you and I do video based on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!